Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with a, another model video. Today reviewing the Super Cheap Auto Primer Filler Blue Tin. Two litre quantity. It was extremely cheap, very much available and the mix would be very similar for other automotive lacquer primer fillers across other brands and countries. You'd remember that I reviewed the rattle can version a few years back which would I'll use to spray on 3D prints to cover the Z axis and sand away for a very smooth finish. It produced processing 3D prints very very quickly. In liquid form I'm hoping to use it for a lot more purposes plus airbrushing and hopefully even thickening it up into putty. Dealing with much larger quantities of chemicals, please be aware of the environmental impact as well as health and safety who has access. The fumes are very noxious, very flammable. A spillage is a hassle as well as if kids or vulnerable individuals can access it. Uh, be careful how you dispose of it. It is thinnable with lacquer thinner. I'm using the premium super cheap auto one which mixes very well as a retardant and slows down. I've also acquired sandpaper, a spoon, measuring cups and a thinner dispenser. Larger tins also have an issue of the materials separating from thinner pigment and paint a very good shake and stir is definitely required. The consistency left in a syrupy like format thick enough for hand painting. The first test involved just decanting it in a larger hobby jar and brushing it across a 3D printed diorama surface to be sanded later. It was cleaned up in the same lacquer thinner and wiped off with tissue. I found this to be very inefficient requiring multiple layers and sanding a very lumpy surface. I decanted a fresh batch and built up the thickness with baking soda. Sort of works like a micro filler and mixed it to the consistency almost of Mr. Surfacer 500 or Tamiya basic type putty. It was also a fairly uneven surface when hand painted though due to the sheer thickness it built up to cover the Z axis in one to two coverings and sanded back fairly easily. Again requiring lacquer thinner to clean up and the paintbrush and about 24 hours to dry. The product does have a tendency of shrinking, thus the first test being inefficient. Using the same baking soda mix as a putty, I applied it across a seam line on a traditional model kit, allowing it 24 hours to dry. This was done in two sessions as it shrunk a bit and managed to completely cover the seam to a flat surface and thinning down the putty airbrushed on for a flat surface. This worked amazingly just like to me a basic type as a seam line or an imperfection filler. Thickened primer filler works very effectively as a putty with baking soda mixed in. It didn't affect the integrity, the strength, the stick anything like that. The ratio I did was between 5 to 20 percent baking soda to straight filler primer and it just applies well on imperfections, rough areas and seams. For covering an entire 3D print it was still very inefficient and we're going to look at airbrushing now. The baking soda mix has been set aside permanently as putty and a fresh amount of filler primer is decanted in a 100 ml squirt bottle. Thinning ratio I'm going for is one part primer, five part thinner. That is 20 ml of primer. Utilizing a 100 ml syringe with a pipe Greasing up the o-ring I easily siphoned out thinner safely without getting on my hands and squirted it into the bottle. Ball bearing is added and it's shuck thoroughly to even it all out. It was easily squirted into the airbrush and at a low PSI of between 11 to 15 had a great amount of success spraying it on. It did not clog detail on the Gundam part and two to three passes filled the Z axis nicely. For sanding 
on the 3D printed part. I started with 80 to 100 grit sandpaper to run down to the bare plastic and polished it up from 300 to 1000 grit sandpaper to a very smooth piece. Both parts, the hand painted and the airbrush one were sanded side by side, giving the same result. Airbrushing is a far quicker and smoother experience and was a lot easier to sand. A second round of priming with the same mixture from the squirt bottle covered the sanding scratch marks and we've gotten an equal finish on the two pieces. From this experiment I have concluded the most efficient way of processing a 3D print is spraying it with one part filler primer, five part thinner through an airbrush giving it two to three coats allowing 24 hours to dry, sanding it thoroughly with 100 grit sandpaper down to bare plastic, polishing it up and then a second round of airbrushing of the same mix one coat to get a primed surface. Spraying the Gundam part one coat at a low PSI did not flood, fill or distort any of the detail or melt the plastic it is perfectly fine to use to prime your plastic model kits. This worked as well as utilizing the filler primer from a rattle can. In the end, this is an automotive product designed to go through a larger nozzle 0.7 to 1 millimeter spray gun through a much larger and higher PSI air compressor and thinned in a different manner to be applied to steel automotive products or large plastic products. Utilizing the Kumis airless sprayer which is a lot cheaper to possess and easier to use, I'm going to be spraying very large 3D prints for cosplay. I'm fairly new and inexperienced with spray guns and especially an airless sprayer which is fairly unusual to be found in the painting community. Utilizing this two litre container I'm doing the exact same mix as for airbrushing. One part spray primer, five part thinner. Utilizing the Super Cheap Auto Premium Thinner. This will be a slow dry. The important thing with airless sprayers is it uses a piston pump to rapidly activate a diaphragm to siphon air out and paint out and atomize it through that nozzle straight onto whatever you're spraying. It needs to be lubricated with petroleum jelly or oil. At this mix thoroughly put together, it sprayed beautifully in a few thick coats onto the helmet and immediately went to cleaning up with the same lacquer thinner. It is very, very cheap, even though it's premium. Wiping down all the surfaces with a rag and thinner on it, pulling apart all the components, scrubbing it, and re-lubricating the piston and the diaphragm. The Ella sprayer takes a little longer to set up and clean up than an airbrush, but it was completely worthwhile. The first time I used it in the review, it was a bit awkward, and I put in the cheaper enamel overly thinned. It produced a decent enough result on a plain surface that wants something far more detail and in a quality automotive lacquer with a nice thinner it did an absolute wonderful and beautiful job. I will be utilizing airless sprayers from now on in my hobby for these much larger uh, one foot to half meter size projects. The fact that I took a complete blind stab at mixing and air gunning this primer for a more automotive purpose, I would actually be comfortable to spray this on a larger surface such as a bonnet of a car or a, a big object. The slightest amount of orange peel occurring would not be that much of a big issue of allowing the surface to dry thoroughly and buffing it up with several hundred to a thousand grit sandpaper. The flexibility of this product with its indigenous thinner is that easy and brilliant to use. In its vast quantity that I'm buying it at is far cheaper and more affordable than smaller hobby products that are being imported from Japan or other fun 
far-flung parts of the world. You're almost looking at cents to the mill opposed to dollars for 10 milliliters. I did a few more spray jobs, a few resin 3D prints. It sticks to cast resin quite nicely, a couple of other model parts, and it just went from strength to strength. I'm most as comfortable to spray with as Mr. Surfacer or Tamir Primus. In the putty form back when we did the seam line, it's just like Tamir putty. It's not the best, it shrinks a bit, but again, mixing it at scents for the mill, I'm more than happy to do a couple of coats and build it up for its shrinking ratio properties and gauging it up. It would make scale modeling far more affordable, easier, and more importantly, processing 3D prints far more efficient and way quicker than other methods or specially scale model products utilized. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, stay tuned for further content. I hope these experiments were useful and there's something here you can take away. I will be buying more mainstream automotive paints in large quantities and mixing, experimenting with them for scale model purposes and utilizing less and less base colors from more expensive brands to cut the cost of my hobby. Catch you guys later.